So there's a whole process to this, uh, to responding to an emergency. And I guess we'll just kind of let you go with it, Joe. Like what, what do we get involved in? What's, so I've been there, I've sized it up. Um, I've called you and you're like, yeah, this is a good, this is a go. Um, we're on the way. What happens? Yeah. So, um, I mean, the first thing we're going to do, you know, after we, you know, gather equipment and, and grab our go bags and, and hit the door, we're in route, right? Um, there's some things you would have coached the, the client uh, to do and not do, you know, with, with regard to... Yeah, let's talk to, about some of those things. What, what do they need to do while they're waiting for us? What yeah. do they need to do or not do? Yeah, so please don't turn anything off, right? Yeah. That's, that's the first thing is, is uh, there's, there's a lot of transient uh, artifacts, you know, so we'll, we'll say that word a lot probably. Evidence. Uh, evidence, right, that exists in computer memory, uh, it exists in different caches in your system, and if you turn your computer off, uh, those all go away. You know, uh, RAM is temporary. So we're going to ask you not to turn anything off. Um, we're probably going to ask you to disconnect from the Internet. Um, so the idea... Just a cable pull. Yeah, just pull the cable. We're going to leave the network equipment running. Uh, depending on the scenario, we might have some more specific isolation recommendations about, you know, pulling uh, network cables from individual systems or something like that, right? So trying to achieve some kind of containment if it's required. But in general, we're concerned with the preservation of evidence. Um, well, and, let's talk yeah. about that for a minute because um, there's an important component to this, and it's cyber insurance. And uh, this is not going to be a bashing of cyber insurance uh, uh, presentation. Um, just know that um, a lot of this retention of evidence is dual purpose. Yeah. Number one, and, and probably foremost, you as a caller into us, right, that needs, that needs help is going to want to know, at the end of the day, you're going to be asked, who was it? When did it happen? Why did they get us? Yeah. What did they date? You know, the who, what, when, where, why, and how, yep. right? What did they take? How much did they take? Did they take anything? How did they get it out of here? How did they eventually get, in? you know, eventually, the obviously, the customer wants to know how in the world did this happen so that we can stop it from happening again. That's right. Yep. Okay. So a lot of that preservation of evidence is first and foremost in our minds um, because whether you've called insurance or not, that's an important part of, you know, our investigation. Mm-hmm. So you're going to lead the effort forensically to, I guess, first gather these artifacts, right? Yeah, correct. So uh, me and, and any other team members that would come on to respond, um, first we're going to have an interview. You know, so we're going to arrive on site, and, and we're going to have an interview uh, with the client. So we're going to ask, you know, in your own words, to describe what happened, what's led up to this, um, and, and we're we're kind of gathering information at that point about your environment, how it's configured, uh, so that we can come up with a strategy for future containment. Uh, so we can come up with a priority evidence collection strategy. We know which systems to go to first. There's some obvious uh, choices in any environment, but there might be some specific uh, issues, especially if. Uh, and oftentimes people have an inkling of, of where the incident might have started. Yeah, okay. And that, that's a real accelerator in in getting to, you know, kind of the root cause artifacts pretty fast. So that interview process usually takes uh, about an hour. Um, you know, we go through, ask our interview questions and, and get a scope. And, um, yeah, from there we'd, we'd move into collection. So um, I think one of the things that happens, especially visually, is um, – when people call an organization like us, I think they anticipate like Black Hawk helicopters, <laughs> um, us repelling, you know, yeah. rope repelling down yeah. with our go bags, right? You talked about our go bags and yeah. and basically our go bags contain lots of hard drives. Yeah. Lots of solid state, right. lots and lots, because we have to dump that evidence onto something, right? Yeah. And, you know, it doesn't happen like that. So um not to, you know, anti climatic this, but a lot of what happens when we first get there is we it's a lot of talking. It is a lot of talking. I, I will I will take a moment to share a, a kind of cool story. Um, <laughs> okay. Though about uh, deploying and uh, we were responding to an incident a number of years ago, 
and it, it just so happened that the uh, company had uh, sent all of their employees home at a similar time as to when we were arriving. So we're pulling up in multiple cars, and we've all got <laughs> our, our evacuating uniform. evacuating the yeah, building. Yeah, so they're evacuating. We're coming in, and, and we've got our... Um, our logoed shirts on, our logoed bags. Everybody's carrying two bags in, and uh, basically we're we're getting a bunch of hell yeahs. Go get them, boys! Uh, you know, as we're That's walking funny. in from the from the staff, and uh, you know, so that was pretty cool. That's the closest we get to uh, right. You right. Know, we don't arrive in synchronized SUVs or helicopters <laughs> or anything, but that's funny. Uh, it was pretty close. Well, and and I and I'll tell you. Uh, for the audience, like one of one of the main things why that's a lot of talking, to be just brutally honest with you, is because we don't know who you are. Um, we don't know anything about your network. We don't know what you have and don't have. So there's a lot of op- there's a lot of time that has to be spent for for us to orient orientate ourselves. Um, so since we'll be able to replay this again, um, some of the things that help later is please keep in mind that during an incident like this. You may have all the information that we need. Yeah. And guess where it's guess yeah. where it is. Yeah. It's on an encrypted drive uh, on the file server. You know, on the file server. Right. So you won't be able to get to any of this information. So what you should what you should do is you should print all this out and put it in a binder and update it from time to time. Make it orange. Go get orange hot pink binders off of Amazon. Yeah. And or Office Depot or whatever. And make them visible. So in an emergency, that's what you're going to grab, and it's going to have your network diagram, and it's going to have who your all your vendors are. Right. Right? It's going to yeah. have your incident response plan, your disaster recovery plan. Yep. Because you know you have all those. Right? <laughs> yeah, so work on those, please. Joe, how, out of how many incidents has somebody actually produced their IR for us, their incident response plan? Zero times have I been presented with an IRP. So that that becomes difficult later and we'll talk about that so we've entered the collection process how do you do that how do you actually collect the evidence so there's there's a number of strategies obviously we um so we've got a series of software packages i don't know if you want me to go into those a little bit yeah you can that's fine so um you know over the years we've uh partnered with a number of different folks our current partner is binalize um it's an agent-based and an offline collection-based uh, forensic triage system. It allows us to, to very quickly visualize and analyze the evidence that we've collected, and it also streamlines that collection process. Sure. So as part of our incident response practice, we maintain um, you know, multiple forensic certifications for multiple people, and, and in those courses, we're trained how to identify and collect you know, this evidence manually, which can be done, and you can do it with all open source tools, and they're great, and they're usually current, but to really accelerate that process to the velocity that you'd want to have as a client when you're, you've got incident responders in, um, we find a commercial package okay. is, is really a great way to do it. So we will, um, as part of assembling our go bags, we will produce... Uh, these custom offline collectors, um, and and drop those onto our uh, drives so that basically every drive is kind of self-contained with the software that we need to collect it. And along the way, you know, that part of understanding and interviewing is we're understanding, do you have a virtual environment? What kind of virtual environment do you right. have? Is that environment operational do your credentials work <laughs> sure. to, a- to access it, right? Yeah, there's been a lot of domain controllers that we couldn't log into. Yeah, so uh, a, a tactic of some ransomware groups is uh, on their way out. They reset all the passwords. Yeah. Um, and, of course, that's designed to prevent uh, any kind of, uh, you know, study of their activities. You know, for it's, it's designed to inhibit incident response activities. So... This is kind of really um, it, these frameworks, you know. While you know they're they're tedious and and you, you might find them annoying or getting in your way, right? They're designed to help you recover, right? You know later, so uh, you know robust 
back up, you know, administrative accounts. Well, let's go into that a little bit. So um, uh, the reason we're going down these tracks, and and if you're just joining us, I've got Joe Tenney, our, our VP of Cyber Ops. He also leads our, our incident response program right now. And we're talking about what happens when a cybersecurity company responds in an emergency to an organization. Um, so what we're setting this up to do is, is really a couple things. And I know I keep softballing you this, but I, you know, we've been on uh, too many of these. So I, I kind of know yeah. how this works. Um, is we're trying to set you up for, number one, if you do have robust backups, mm-hmm. uh, which I'll tell you, if I had a nickel for every time somebody wanted, we walked in and said, no, our backups are good, and they weren't, I'd be a bazillionaire. Um, yeah. So uh, the whole backup thing is a whole different thing. But if you do have good backups, the one thing that you're going to want from us is, well, when should I restore from? Yeah, so that's, you know, once we get collection out of the way, uh, which could take... 12 hours on the short side. It could take days could on take the longer weeks. side. It could take weeks if we're, um, you know, it, there are some extreme strategies to collection where, um, and thankfully we haven't had to deploy this, but but it's an option where we actually bring in a, a red team hacking group to, to hack back into your servers, right? Right. Um, where we need to exploit your domain controller so that we can get credentials to it. Um so that would be very involved and, and can take a long time. But once we get that, you're right. That our goal, you know, initially is we're, we're trying to find initial access. Right. Um, and then we're going to try and track the activities that happened with the goal of being able to pinpoint uh, specific restore dates and times that you can use where your data uh, integrity was intact. Right. Um, and you know, where, where the attackers, where we're not restoring a malware toolkit, we're not restoring any kind of persistence yeah. or remote access. So the the other thing we're trying to help with, too, in, in assisting you in, in the recovery is we're trying to find what's called patient zero. Yeah. So patient zero is that originating device. Who? What was the first in the chain of events, right? What was chain one? Yeah. Um, so, you know, we've seen and heard of a lot of organizations that, um, matter of fact, we were called about one just a couple of weeks ago um, that tried to do the recovery themselves without any help. And uh, they just decided to restore from backup. And the threat actor um, either came back or re-encrypted them. Yeah. So, um, yeah, if you, if you don't, you, maybe you're just interested in restoring data and not operating systems. But uh, attackers will often on... Um, on a machine kind of, let's let's say, off target. Uh, so let's say they're focused on your server network. Uh, they might uh, drop uh, a method of persistence like Cobalt Strike um, or uh, Brute Retail, some other toolkit that's out there. They'll, they'll, sp- they'll sprinkle those among your workstations, and they won't do anything else to those workstations, right? They don't, they don't want you to, to notice that they've dropped those there. And yeah, that opens the door for a couple weeks later for them to begin activities again. Maybe you thought, I oh, mean, they just got these three servers, easy win. I'll restore my F drive and move on about my day. And almost never is that, you know, from a short or from yeah. a medium term to long term, a successful strategy. <laughs> 